So recall from last time the definition of a measure space. This is how we this is where we ended in the previous lecture. It's defined to be a triple, uh, so these three ingredients where you've got an underlying set, a sigma algebra, and a non-negative measure. So measure means it's a countably additive function on that sigma algebra, and non-negative just means it takes non-negative values. So that's a measure space. You can package it this way. These two together make what we call a measurable space, and then if you throw in the non-negative measure, you get a measure space. Now I want to look at some examples, and like I mentioned last time, the examples will be kind of trivial or very small or not, not the deepest or most useful examples, although this one is kind of useful. Um, but that's fine, right? It's, it's better than no examples. So for this one, let x be any set, and then fix some point in x. Then uh, we'll deal with this point in a moment. If you just let x be any set, then the power set of x is going to be a sigma algebra on x. It's one of the two trivial sigma algebras, right? Given any set, you always have the power set, which consists of everything, so it's closed under whatever you want, countable union, intersection, whatever. Um, and there's another trivial one, which is the smallest sigma algebra you can have, one containing only the empty set and the full set. This is the biggest sigma algebra you can have. So anyway, that makes this pair together a measurable space. So then, what would a measure be? So when I say this is my sigma algebra, I'm saying that elements of this set, so subsets of x, uh, are what I'm going to call measurable sets. So everything in this set will be called a measurable set. So those are the things on which I need to define uh, my measure. That's why they're called measurable sets. That's the reason for that terminology, is that they are the ones on which you can uh, apply the measure. So to define a measure, I need to define a function from here, and it needs to assign any given thing in here, so any given subset of so it needs to uh, assign to any given subset of x uh, some non-negative number. And here's how delta sub a is going to work, where a is this just random point that we fix at the very beginning. Uh, it, it gives 0 for the measure of a, capital A, if little a is not in capital A, and it gives 1 if little a is in capital A. So that's, that's how this works. When you put these together, you get a measure space. So to verify that we have a measure space, there are a few things to check. First, that this is a sigma algebra on x. That's nothing. Uh, it's a very trivial sigma algebra. Um, and then also that this is a non-negative, that's easy, measure. So countably additive function. So you have to check that this is countably additive. Is this countably additive? So think about if you have a countable collection of disjoint uh, measurable sets, here, all subsets of x are considered measurable. So if you have just a countable collection of disjoint uh, subsets of x, then is there is the measure, in this sense, of their union the same as the sum, the infinite sum, the series of the measures? So you might want to pause and just think about that or do it on scratch paper quickly. Um, but this ends up being countably additive. So this one is called the, uh, this would be called the Dirac delta measure. Uh, the way I like to think about this one is that uh, if I imagine that the set X consists of the points in some physical space, um, and uh, my measure is measuring the mass of different uh, subsets of that space, uh, like measuring the mass contained in different subsets of, in the space, then this would be like I have a point mass of mass 1 concentrated at this point A. Um, so I think, of that, I think of this as like a point mass measure. All of the uh, material in the space is sort of concentrated at A. If a set contains that one point A, then it gets all the mass to it. And if it doesn't contain that one point, then it has mass 0. Now let's look at uh, a sort of example but not, not fully an example. So here, let x be the set of all natural numbers, and then let fancy a be the collection of uh, finite sets of natural numbers along with also the 
ones that have finite complement. So like the set consisting of one, two, three would be in here. And the set consisting of everything other than one, two, three would also be in here. But say the set of even numbers would not be in here. Um, then this is actually not a sigma algebra because if you uh, say you union together a bunch of finite uh, a countable collection of finite sets then that's not necessarily going to be finite uh, right and it might not even have finite complement I don't know so you could build up the collection of even numbers by unioning you know this set this set I don't know if you want to include zero as a natural number whatever and then there's a countable union. Each of these is a finite set, and so it's in here. But the countable union, the collection of even numbers, would not be in there. So definitely not a sigma algebra. But it is an algebra of sets. Now, since this is not a sigma algebra, I'm definitely not going to conclude by saying that this is a measure space. Right? Yeah, I'm definitely not going to say that this triple is a measure space. Because remember, we define measure space to be a triple where uh, you have a set, sigma algebra, and a measure. Here, not a sigma algebra. So I'm definitely out of, I'm not going to be able to use this term. However, uh, the word measure is defined on any algebra of sets. Like, you can have a measure on an algebra of sets, even if it's not a sigma algebra. That's totally fine to have a measure. So here's a, a mu. And let's see if this is a measure. So mu is going to be from here to there, uh, the way a measure would be, assigning a non-negative number to every uh, element of this. Actually, I guess a measure doesn't have to give a non-negative number. It can give any real number in our formulation. Um, but this one will give non-negative numbers. And it will give 0 for all the finite sets and 1 for all the sets that have finite complement. And there's no conflict here. A set either is finite or has finite complement, right? It cannot be both. Otherwise, the natural numbers would be a finite set. So uh, this is how mu works. Now, is mu countably additive? Uh, well, I mean, the natural numbers themselves are this countable union of disjoint sets. I don't know if you want to include 0, but let's say we don't. This is the natural number, this is this countable union, right? Now when you apply mu to any given one of these, you get zero. So if you add up the mu's of all of these, you get a series, an infinite series of zeros, which gives zero. On the other hand, if you take mu of the union, so mu of the set of natural numbers, well that's a set that has finite complement, it has empty complement. So we get one. So mu of this is one, while the sum of the mu's is going to be 0. So this is not countably additive. So I cannot even say that mu is a measure. So this is a good uh, non-example, actually. So new example now, but with, with the same underlying set. But this time, the sigma algebra is going to be everything. Um, and it will be a sigma algebra, I should say. Last time, this was not a sigma algebra. This time, we're going to use the sigma al this trivial sigma algebra consisting of everything. Um, then define this uh, function, which will end up actually being a measure. So mu of a set of natural numbers is going to be this sum. So basically, if you know it, to get a feel for it, if you include the natural numbers 3, 5, 22 in your set, if that's your set of natural numbers, then mu of that set would be uh, 1 over 2 to the 3 plus 1 over 2 to the 5 plus 1 over 2 to the 22. And even if it's an infinite set, then this becomes a series, but it's an absolutely convergent series, uh, so there's no problem. right? The, it's like a geometric series, the sum of 1 half to the n. It's a geometric series with this base 1 half. So that converges absolutely. Um, and I mean, it, it's, it's sort of like a 
uh, a, a geometric series where we're leaving out some of the terms, right? So uh, take a geometric series, but drop every term where you just turn it to zero if the natural number is not in A. Um, so by comparison test, it would you would know it's a convergent series, for example. Um, so this uh, this does end up being countably additive, um, and I mean you can kind of imagine why. Like if I if I if I write a as a union, uh, or, uh, yeah, let's say a was a union of of a countable collection of of subsets of, of n, um, and they're all disjoint. Then mu of this union, uh, mu of any given one of them, would be this sum. Maybe I should not use n here, but let's say i in a n, 2 to the minus i. And then mu of the union Or actually, let me focus on the the sum of the mu's here. So if I take the sum of mu a n, uh, running over all n, then I get the sum running over all n of the sum running over i in a n, two to the minus i. And since the an are disjoint, since the an are disjoint, uh, this is sort of just a rearrangement of what I would get if I just took this, right? So I'm just, depending on the, the ordering here, this might be a rearrangement of what, what I would get if I just did this. For an absolutely convergent series, um, rearrangement does not affect the the outcome of the series. So th that's one way to see that mu here is countably additive. So in this case, um, what would you say is mu of the set of all natural numbers? It would be the sum, let's say our natural numbers start from 1, the sum from 1 to infinity of uh, 1 over 2 to the n, right? So that's 1. So that's the measure of the largest set you can have, which is everything, is has measure 1. Um, when you have this situation where the measure of, uh, so this, okay, so since this is a non-negative uh, countably additive function, uh, definitely we are at an exit, we are looking at an example of this triple being a measure space. When you have this situation, a measure space, where the measure of the entire space is 1, then you call this a probability measure. So this is a probability measure. And um, basically, uh, if, you, if you want to think in terms of probability theory, uh, you can think of the measure, so you can think of a, a set, you know, the elements of the set as being different uh, outcomes of something. Okay, I'm struggling to talk about this because I don't really know probability theory, but uh, let me just frame it in terms of a silly example. Uh, let's say uh, we play a guessing game and I'm, I'm allowed to uh, pick a number, any number from the set of natural numbers, and then you have to try to guess what number I, I'm thinking of. And I don't pick randomly, so I don't just like totally randomly pick a natural number. I prefer some numbers more than others. And in this setup, maybe I put like a weight of one half on the natural number one. And then I put a weight of 
uh, one quarter on the natural number two and a weight of one eighth on the natural number three. So I have a 50% chance of choosing, of thinking of the number one and a uh, one quarter chance of thinking of the number two and a one eighth chance of thinking of the number three and so on and so on. So for any given natural number, there is a chance that I'm think that that's the one that I'm thinking of. Um, but you know, the larger you, numbers you take, the smaller the chance that that's the number I'm thinking of. Then what does it mean when you take mu of a particular set of natural numbers is you're looking at the probability that uh, the number that I'm thinking of is from this set. That's the idea. So uh, what's the probability that the number that I'm thinking of is from the set of natural numbers? One. It, that's certain, right? Those were sort of the rules of the game to begin with. So you can interpret the probability interpretation of, of the values that mu takes becomes available when mu of the entire space is one. It's sort of certain that something, uh, that whatever you're sampling is going to be something from the set of possible things, that, values that can be taken. All right, uh, and if you're a stats person, then I'm sorry about the terrible uh, probability explanation there. I, I, I don't fully uh, stand behind what I'm saying, but I'm just trying to add some flavor to, to what's going on here. Um, by the way, uh, th this example, the direct delta measure, um, where x is any set, you fix a point A, and then you, you define your measure like this, um, this is also a probability measure, right? Because um, this is a measure space, and then if I take the measure of everything, well, A is in there, little a is in there, so that's 1. Um, so what would this represent? Maybe I'm thinking of a random point in the set. Um, and then this represents what are the chances that the point I'm thinking of is in any given set. Well, here we're saying the chance is 100% if the set contains little a, and 0% if the set does not contain little a. So this sort of represents a situation where, as we play this game, I'm just in love with this particular point, little a. And that's the one I think of every single time. So I'm like 100% certain to always pick little a. Uh, 